uh, monthly meetup. We got uh, Steve Nichols here, our CEO. Um, we talk talking things. Uh, as one of our panelists, um, and then uh, of course myself, and we have Tan, uh, one of our founders of being Palad, Jonathan here. Uh, and we have Darius who showed up here on our meetup. Woo! Yeah. Um, so today we're, we're going to mainly, you know, Steve's been in Game Street a long time and, you know, seen lots of stuff. He's got lots of interesting opinions on, on various game stuff, and uh, so we, we chat about kind of that stuff, so you know, we're all in indie boat, and we all do various indie things, you've had some experience running your own company, and, and then you um, talk about that. Um, of course, we have the questions, if you guys have questions, uh, go ahead and free answer, put them down there, and we'll try to get to them, I'm sorry if we take a little time, because I'm looking at like three different screens at the same time, and so I pay attention periodically. Um, and if you guys want to stop us at any time, have to ask a question, or have a topic to talk about, just send in the questions there, um, and uh, we will talk about that. So yeah, so in the indie scene, it's changed a lot, especially since you probably initially got into the game industry. Mm -hmm. um, you want to give the, the folks at home a little bit of background of your game history in, in the industry? Gosh, I've been making games a long time. Actually, not recently, since I've been at GameSide, I've been making this tech to make games for, for other people make games. but. Maybe 20 years, 22 years of game making. That's a long time. Um, and yes, I did have a little stint. Most of that career was spent at large publishers as a developer manager type. Um, I did about three years stint of indie game development, and I found uh, yeah, I made some, I had some success, but it's really, really hard to be successful as an indie developer. I found, and so that's an, and it's interesting. I, I, that's it's one of the things I like about GameStyle is we can help kind of empower people to build cool apps and games, and they don't have to do all the hard work of the you know, underlying engine building, uh, so people can try out their ideas and try to get the success faster. But man, yeah, that's that was my biggest takeaway from being indie dev is that's hard. It's hard to it's hard to be successful in that in that field. Yeah, even even the technology's changed. Like yeah. before, you when you start, you start with ninety seven. What, doing mobile? No, or doing games. Do, no, I started in 1991. 91, okay. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I was doing I was doing games on DOS, man. Wait a minute. Wow. I feel for you. I feel for you. Yeah, it was good. 640K. Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at Atari. I was thinking about doing an Atari 2600 game. Oh, well, there you go. And, uh, yeah, that I know you were talking about that maybe for your wife, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah it's insane. The thing has, like, bites. Like, you're looking at bites yeah. in the ring. You're trying to, exactly. I did. 100 <laughs> bites. Now go. Fit them in. Yeah, put that all in there. You know, I have like I have that I can draw like a texture. <laughs> no, you're you're, you can. You do you're, you're, draw, you're drawing the video memory. There are oh. no. There is no graphics API. You're drawing directly the video memory. In that case. Wow. Yep. wow. And, and you also the best part about that system is that you have uh, only like two actors at a time, and so you have to like trace the the ray beam as it goes down the television uh -huh. to draw it here. And there's a passage you move it here so that you can have more than one actor, more than two actors on the screen. Wow. I think you hooked it for eight. They call it called racing the beam. Yes. I'm not sure that really applies today, so but yeah, it's pretty cool though. Yeah, it's weird, crazy old tech. I, I never programmed on that. Sort of thing, so that was a little primitive for me, but uh, yeah, good times. But yeah, that's hard. Indie game development's hard. That's why yeah, I know. Well, that's but, why I like this. Yeah, before the fourth, you know, just you know, like Unity and us and very few, right? It was the publishers who had the, the money to afford these engines and the resources yeah. to develop these engines. Mm -hmm. um, very true. Massive, massive huge. And the developers having to go beg the publishers for money too. Actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is pretty hard. Yeah. yeah, that was never a fun thing. I I saw it firsthand several times destroy companies. Yep, publishers uh, are hard to work with, and when, since they own all the have all the money, they can dictate what you do. But you might make some good money off of them. That's nice. That's true. You don't mind uh, getting bent over the barrel a little bit. That's not bad. Could be worse. If you can get picked up by a publisher, it's not a bad idea. Um, it's pretty hard to do though. It's like getting your book published. You know. Yeah. Like I got a great book idea. Well, nobody's going to publish it most likely. So that's so being able to even if it's a great idea, right? Because publishers mm -hmm. are risk averse. They don't want to try risky stuff. They don't. Sure. They avoid well, it. And, like and, and that's one thing we're seeing in our industry now, right? So the Indians are really both pushing the innovation, and the publishers mm -hmm. are still sitting on these big titles. How many Call of Duty do we have now? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is the amount of development resources put into exclusively Call of Duty or exclusively Assassin's Creed. Like you can have 900 people working on one Assassin's Creed, mm -hmm. and you know there's going to be another Assassin's Creed next year, so there's probably an additional. 500 or so people working on that. And so that's like what, like 1,500, 2,000 people working on two games? Yeah. Some of it's just the budget model, though. Like, there was that year where EA tried to go more indie, like things with, um, with the, with the free-running game. Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge. Yeah. And during that year, they actually took a lot of risk. And mm -hmm. then, they, you know, they, they, hated, they, hated for all of, they hated for all of it. And it's just because 
the, that's kind of the appeal, both the good and the bad of indie is indie usually means niche. Yeah. And so you can't justify the giant budgets that these large publishers do throw at things <coughs> and all these kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the but the but you know, one of the big things that the, the uh, indies are about is like the IP, right? Yeah. You know, I work for any studio, we have publishers approach us, but they want their IP and our, our guys like, No, yeah. you can't have our IP, that that that's not a string you won't attach. And now you're starting to see those mm -hmm. publishers starting to um, listen to they need to keep their IP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why uh, Sunset Overdrive is on Xbox One. Microsoft will let them keep the in or keep the intellectual property, which is totally rare. Um, Insomniac games, they used to do a bunch of exclusives for Sony all the time. But they wanted their own intellectual property. Who can blame them? <laughs> but if the publisher pays for it, that's the thing they want it. Who can blame them? Who can blame them? If I give you $10 million to build some stuff, I want IP. Why am I going to pay you to build sure. it and then let you keep them? get anything. And sure. Anything. Yeah. And if the game flops, you know, well, that sucks. Who t who's taking the risk? Yeah, and then you go back to kind of, you know, starting to see some of what, like an artist style mentality, right, in yeah. some of this, right? In, in that, where this is my artistic vision. How dare you take my artistic vision with you? Yeah. It, well, I mean, it's, I, I understand the argument of an artist, and I can understand, but at the same time, someone's got to pay your bills, and, you know, you've got, you need money to survive, and it's kind of like Michelangelo. Like, they were beautiful works, you know, produced for money, you know, it's not, not a bad thing. You know, honestly, if you're creative enough to create that intellectual property, you just say you can't, you know, put lightning in a bottle again. Lightning in a bottle, I like it. You can catch it, that's good. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it's just tough. So I think what's really cool about indie game development, these kinds of engines, is that they let so many kinds of games be built, and so there's a lot of risk taking. Most of the games are commercial failures. I think that's a true statement. It, well, it's, uh, it's hard, yeah. Uh, I mean, not, not because of even, even if they're good games, it's just there's so much content. So some stuff floats to the top, makes good money, and they'll get picked up, snapped up by people with some deep pockets and push it. Um, or they'll get cloned by, you know, folks like Zynga, which will happily clone your game if it's yeah. successful. Yeah. And, uh, not sure they're still doing that today, but they've certainly done in the past. Based, so, based on a question, just to make sure, can everyone hear us? If you're muted, then just answer with a question. Oh, uh, we have an audio problems? No, I can unmute everybody, but uh, I haven't yet. Okay. okay. Yes, we're good. Okay. Because there's 16. Nice thing to make sure. Yeah. So there's 16 people. And you don't want 16 people. We, we yeah. so far have had it work okay, but you get a certain cap and things start. I see. But if we, if everybody wants, if you're okay with that, I can start new people if you want. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. All right, I'll start new people and I'll have. All right, we'll do that, and people can join in the discussion. Just like we're, we're just uh, flapping our gums here. I like it. All right, all right, people, I'm muting. If you don't want to be muted, if you don't want to be unmuted, just re -mute, mute yourself. Yeah. And there's no massive unmute, so I have to do this one by one. Oh, look, he's clicking each one of you. You're getting individual attention. That's fantastic. Amazing. I can't unmute people who don't have microphones. Click so. again. <laughs> there's a unmute all button. Oh, where's the unmute all button? Right <laughs> under all the people. Ah! Oh, that meets everybody. Unmute all. Okay, it doesn't unmute all. You just <laughs> unmute all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I'll start from the bottom. <laughs> all right, that's funny. Well, first you have to unmute us. Now you just unmute all. Unmute unmute all. Unmute all. No, we're 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 mute. We're mute. We're we're there. Oh, well, oh, it says flash on the telephone. Are we muted or not? Um, our <laughs> individual accounts and telephone. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, what did you do? All right, it's fine. Uh, you. Okay, we're unmuting people now. Hand sign to bottom, sign to top. All right. A little time difficulty here. Don't mind us. If everyone's unmuted, if you have a question, just... We'll, we'll try just people talking, and, yeah. we'll up and we'll go back to the question. Just please be polite. Don't interrupt people. Wait for people are done. Over. All right. Good times. Okay. Back to the, the wonderful indie stuff. <laughs> you did, you did um, if you most of you know, you did Draw Something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked on Draw Something, yeah. yeah wrote the majority of the code for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, my last company was contracted, so we did our own indie games. You can play these games on iOS too. Uh, one's called Jenny, which is kind of a word game, multiplayer word game, which is kind of fun. Didn't do well. What I found making that game is don't make games for smart people because uh, most people aren't smart, and uh, they get upset when they're made to feel dumb. Like, uh, so it's a competitive word game, and you spell stuff, and if you spell bad, well, poorly, you just don't. You, you, you do poorly. Anyway. That didn't do so good. It still makes some money, but it's not. It was never great. Then we got contracted. That, that's just where we made some good money. Was we were contracted by OMG Pop, which got bought out later later by Zynga to build Draw Something for them. 
Um, and then I made another game called Utter Destruction, which was a uh, 50-foot cow, mutant cow, destroying buildings game, kind of fun, but uh, it really didn't make any money, didn't do well at all. So it's, uh, it's intermittent. My most successful indie game was the one I was contracted to by another company to, to do, and they got them bought out by Zynga, which is great, but dang it, it wasn't RIP. So. All right. Sorry, I'm reading through all of our, <laughs> our Jangle? questions. Jangle? It was called Squabble. Here's another thing that happens, and it really, it really was a problem. So we made a game called. It was first called Squabble, um, which we thought that was a cool name, uh, and, but it sounded too close to Scrabble, and it was a word game. So we got a cease and desist letter from the attorneys at Hasbro. They're like, "No, you can't use the name Squabble because it's too close to Scrabble, even though it's not the same game at all." Oh, that was. That was awful. And we're like, we have to change the name of the game because you're not going to say sue us because they will. And what are we going to do? Nothing. So uh, you change the name of the game. And so immediately downloads went down. It wasn't great. It's still going, but yeah, it was, it was bad news. But it, it's called Jangle. So we found a synonym to Squabble, which is Jangle. But who knew that Squabble and Jangle were synonyms? I found that out. So <laughs> it's, but nobody knows that. Um, now you do. Now I'm more intelligent. You've learned something new. It's fantastic. Um, but. Uh, yeah. So uh, but that's what I found. Uh, you have to make a lot of games, uh, and you might hit on something that's good. Can you answer that one? This question. This question. I'm trying to get through them. There's lots of them. You want to answer that one? Go. What about how to make? Sorry, we're skipping about game style. Do it. Oh, I, I, I said for those, we just we're going to hold those close. Okay, hold the end. Okay, we'll go to the end. Okay. But, yeah, help me keep track of those. But keep those coming in. Keep those kind of questions coming in. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. keep track of those. Okay, can I keep track of those? Okay, back to our indie. Yeah, so I don't know. We can talk about this uh, on and on. What do you think about this? So here's what you're saying, right? We, we started out with one app store, right? Yeah. With, with Apple, pretty much, right? Apple. Mm -hmm. Now we have Google. Now we got Amazon competing with Google, right? And we have BlackBerry, and we can kind of say, hey, we support Android too. Let's not forget Steam. Which well, we're not, we don't support yet, but uh, well, yeah, we have, but we are, well, we're not just like you know the app mobile space and it's like the cellular stuff now, right? Yeah, Steam hasn't gone on board yet either yet, right? Steam hasn't jumped on this bad way, but they're definitely they Microsoft, Microsoft App Store. There's app stores everywhere. Yeah. There's uh, lots of content. People want to own those customers and make money off of them, like Apple did. So, yeah. Bar. Yeah. All right. Nice one on here. Get your ready for game shuffles on it. Linoleum floor. Yes. So yeah, there's lots of uh, lots of app stores. I'm not sure where you're driving there, but so my book yeah. over there. So, <laughs> but it's also like just get your apps on there. But it's also now you're trying to buy with every app, all these app stores. You get to the top, you get noticed, so you can make money. Because that's what you want to do as a developer, right? Yeah. <laughs> make money, make a living, on it, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those things like it's interesting to see how the market's grown in this. Like Steam is pretty much, in my opinion, captured the PC. Digital market. Not really much of a competitor. I mean, there's some publishers who'd like to make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really they're more bad. Yeah. 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 Well, they're also like oh, closed, closed markets, right? Cl closed wall gardens, as they were. Yeah, Ubisoft or Ubisoft has one of their own ones too. Yeah. Yeah. You play like yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Are you right? You got the questions going. Yeah. We got polls too. So Tam's gonna throw polls up there, um, and I'll try and do things so people here can see the polls, and try to keep track of everything at the same time. All right, hold on a second. So, if you're watching, it's you can't see the excitement we're seeing on the screen here as Alan is clicking on things. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to put control over our computer so I don't have to try to deal too much at the same time. Anyway, so Tan's got to pull up there. Have you built a game uh, for a publisher, someone who paid you ahead of time to start developing a game? So, 27 are yes, and 67 are no, and 7% can't say. Which probably means yes. <laughs> I'm growing out a new category there. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised there are a little, there are, there are a few pro people with history here. Yeah, but how do we define indie from the pro? We're right back. Anyway, got a person showing up in the meetup. We're right back. Sorry, I got that back. Right um, uh, I really think if you're self-funded or uh, or have uh, you know, I think indie games are games that are just made on a pretty cheap uh, cheap budget. That's my take. Um, or you're, co I guess that's not technically right. That's how I would cl classify. But it's probably more like you're independent of of corporate interests, but not outside of your own. I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird one. It's a very. It's a strange term. You would think that you know, like I said, it's based off of indie or independent. So you would think that that's it. But then you've got like, no publisher. Maybe that's what it means. I made a game with no publisher, so it's indie. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. All I think of small teams trying to do something uh, without a lot of money. That's what I that's what I think of. Uh, but not everyone makes up their own. What do you think, Jonathan? 
uh, as long as there's not like like a big name company attached to it, then I'm thinking indie is like a small company. I mean, like you have like EA uh, or those are going to be like the big names that you would consider like indie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't consider EA indie. Yeah. That's for sure. Very true. We've, somebody else has showed up. Yes. Somebody's come in. All right. So, uh, yeah, so polls that was a publisher. Yeah, so App Stores and Steam and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Steam's a great platform, and although PC's pretty much going pretty much digital, I don't think there's much, I don't know many people except even the console space where you really want to print your own disc anymore. Yeah. Like, that's quite a lot of investment to, to put a game out, like, you know, with, with PC. Exactly. You just put it out there. You don't have to worry about, oh, we, the size of this print run or all sorts of... Yeah. Or what do I do with these filling discs I have or, like, ET? How do I do with all these cartridges I have? <laughs> Bearing the game. That's right. There you go. You wish you had a game that famous that you could bury. That's and right. Dug up See, you, just, you just invented a new game. Bury the game. Yeah. Go. We're going <laughs> to go. I'll get right on it. That's right. That's right. Do we have more questions, Dan, or what's our... I'm working on one. I haven't seen anything new yet. Let me see where's the question. Someone's video has disappeared. Uh, did I screw up the video or I switch to organizers? Hold on a second. Oh, no. or the video goes away when we do the polls. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. Yeah, I think it's interesting how many more places there are to sell your application, but it seems like... It's infinitely more difficult to get, even though there's more people, it's harder to get them to spend money. Yeah, so I saw, uh, I can't remember where I saw this article. I was doing, I do research periodically to see these interesting ch charts and whatnot. Yeah. But there's a poll showing, uh, maybe Tan, you pointed me to this article. I think it was in Casual Connect, uh, the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, there showed that the fact that the, the amount of people who are paying money for games is not growing as much, or as anything, as the amount of games out there. Yeah. So you now have way too much supply for the amount of demand. Exactly. As you have, and, you start seeing those too, right? Like stores, the amount you have to charge for your app is so little that yeah. it's so hard to make money back on that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think people really understand fully how much it costs to make a game, and a dollar of game doesn't really cover your cost that well. No, it's not. Like that's, and then you have to think about it. When you sell your game for a dollar, that means that really you're only getting seventy cents of the dollar. Yeah, at least an Apple, Apple store. Yeah. Apple. yeah, exactly. Somebody's going to take that as a thirty percent. And that's before taxes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, before taxes. Before taxes. oh yeah, good old yeah, taxes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like it's pretty crazy. Um, I'm painting a very nice picture here. Yeah, sounds great. Well, I'm, well, but, but the only thing but there, I'm worrying about myself. Yeah. Eventually, I want to release an app. But there are companies who are going against that, though. Like, for example, Square's stuff is all $15 on the stores. This is true. And there's stuff as high quality. quality. There's stuff that's high quality. In the United States, their stuff doesn't even really get in the top 50 most of the time. Though. Yeah, but I, like I said, I've downloaded some of their iOS games and been very impressed with like, some of their iOS specific games. I hear their the port of Final Fantasy 3 that is supposedly the best on the whole white uh, Well, I, I, ran into, I played on Steam Rants and Bugs, but yeah, the. <laughs> It looks nice. I, 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 yeah, I haven't played an iPhone one, but I imagine it's similar to the PC. It's another thing. Squaresoft, I have an Android. Android. Put the games on there. You'd be, you'd be surprised how hard it is with graphics to get it across platforms. Uh, I've dealt with that so much here and at home um, with uh, technology. Yeah. Uh, if one thing I wish if Google would ever do would get off the job of Batman again. Okay, I can see that. Come back, come back to the native. Native is so good, you know. It's good. It's just when the, for their platform. I know. Yeah, we deal. With, we deal. With Android's just a mess. It's it is. A mess. It, it, it is. is. That's it why is. you want to use an engine because you don't want to mess with that. Yeah, <laughs> no, we we deal with that mess, yeah. so you don't have to. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for my curiosity, Pete. So, I, uh, how many of you guys here actually are directly affiliated with Game Yeah, That's right. It's like the, the border. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't do that. No. <laughs> it's us versus you. Quiet. Can we all just get yeah. Oh, speaking of other <laughs> things, do it. the other worst thing besides doing graphics and joysticks, mm. in-app purchase. Mm. Oh, there's completely separate APIs. Yeah, and they're in different okay. languages. Oh, yeah. And they're all in different languages. Oh my God. Why? Why? I mean, I guess I'm, I know why. 
You wish you didn't have to know why. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I know why. I wish I didn't know why, because then I could ask that question, but no, I know why. Yes. Everyone's competitive, and they all have to do it their own little way. Yeah, I don't understand why we all have to have, uh, at least, at least, you know, when Amazon came out, at least it's Android, but, like, yeah, every mobile platform comes out once it's own OS. There's the Firefox phone. Oh, and six support. Mm. Oh, and joystick support's in their whole mess. Not only do you have developers, people who make the joysticks, not conforming to standards, but every damn platform wants to have their own IAP mm -hmm. and a different language. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Android's the worst. I hate. Oh my gosh. I, I just hate the Android API for joysticks. Yeah, I can believe that. Everything's in Java. Everything's in Java. There's one small part you can use C plus plus, and if you don't want to make your people want to. Call their hair out trying to have an engine. Oh, just do you have to call it the JNI bridge. You have to run the JNI bridge, and that thing is a terrible it's pile of poo. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of obnoxious. <laughs> Blood slips here and games out of crow. Ooh, games out of crow. Sure. Nice. Well, watch watch anything, watch anything come in. Mm -hmm. so you get a live, we get the live feed there. Like You actually see it going live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good because that GS Pro includes a free muscle. Yeah. It's just GS Pro. Are you still manning the questions, Tan, or have I... Uh, yeah, there aren't any other questions right now. Uh, oh, full and full. Okay. I'm going to assume, Tan, that uh, you are... One more for me, but... Okay, I'm going to assume you're watching the questions yeah. there. Okay. Great. Yeah, speaking of budgets, how much would... Yeah, do you know if you want to talk about budgets or if you can talk about budgets of games you made in the past? Can you talk about the budget of Draw Something? Um, it was pretty small. Uh, I would say Draw Something was probably built on maybe $200,000, okay. I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, for the entire team, everyone involved? That's my guess. Really? Um, yeah. That seems amazingly cheap to me. It wasn't, uh, yeah, I, I mean, my guess. Um, I'm not sure how what their burn was in New York, the people up there, but it was a handful of people. So I should talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, was a, it was a simple game, though, right? So it's like the, the game mechanics were so simple, it, it wasn't not a lot of art production. Guess what? You got icons and buttons because people are making the art. So what's, the, what's your assets? No sound effects. It's like, actually, if you listen, if you play Draw Something, the original one, and you play Jangle, one of our, our other games, right, the button sounds are the same. Like, when you click the button, it's exactly the same sound effect, even. I mean, it's, like, super cheap. So it didn't cost much to build. And it was actually, they had another game called Draw My Thing. And I know, I know what you're thinking. We all thought the same thing. They have a fantastic name, Draw My Thing. But, you know, if people draw with that, they draw a thing. It's an inappropriate thing, uh, which is what gets drawn. Uh, so they changed it to draw something, which uh, is a better name. Um, but it wasn't, wasn't a lot of money. I mean, you, so, you know, for an indie developer, that's a lot of money. I mean, you uh, are going to have 200 grand to be pulling around and <laughs> sure. putting, on, putting on games. But, but still, wasn't that bad. Pretty good sized budget. Pretty good. Good budget compared to like what Call of Duty and these various large ones. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Monitor size. Yeah. I did some crazy workout the other day of the math, like looking behind, and if each of the people that was um, working on Assassin's Creed only made like $60,000 a year, which I know that's like way lower than the average, and the game itself costed a few hundred million with just the people working on it. Like nothing else at all. Yeah, it's just the cost of labor. Software development? Expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's not everybody can program and people pay money for good programmers. Yeah, very true. Yep. Very true. Engineering makes good money. Sure does. Mm -hmm. Artists less. I don't know. I Poor guys. Well, Poor guys. Maybe they pay a lot, but they're worth their weight in gold. Finding a good technical artist? No, I'm not sure about their weight in gold. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I've had to I'll teach, take I, one of them with their weight in gold. I've had, I've had to teach artists what the Alpha Channel was. Uh, well, that's not a very good artist. Yeah, I've had artists. Yeah. That's not a good artist. <laughs> I artists in companies yeah. who are more of like traditional artists who yeah. just picked up how to digital and didn't understand the technical behind it. Oh, And wow. I was like, trying to explain to this person, like, I need, a, I need like, I want animation that's going to play 30 frames per second, and so it needs to be this many frames, so I can do this many frames per second. And then she came back with the wrong set of frames, and it looked weird, and our producer's like, that's not playing the right speed. And I'm like, what speed supposed to play? She's like, oh, 60. I'm like, nope, I said 30. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep. So it goes. Yeah, like I said, good artists are worth their time. All right. Wow. Blood, sweat, and tears, and GS Pro turn the roll around. Nobody had the million dollar game budget? Well, dang it. No, they were surprised by the 8% and the 10 to 100,000. There, there, uh, there, there was a, a, a sharky comment on um, how, do you, how do you make a million on a mobile game? Start with two million and only spend one million of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
and there you go, or get lucky. I don't know, it's hard. But getting customers is a real hard problem. That's the biggest problem. You can make exactly. a great game. How do you get users? Yeah, well, part of like for the indie, is one thing the publisher did for you, right, was marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing is what they did for you, and now as an indie, you have to market for yourself. It's definitely not an easy thing to learn, right? If you're, you know, being a programmer, like I didn't go to marketing school, I don't know what the first thing you have to do about marketing. True, you know. True. Did you guys hire a marketer for draw something? Draw something. Company? They had those guys had that on lock. They had some because the guy that owned the ran the company, his name's Dan Porter. He had some good hooks in the music industry and some other folks. He got some. He basically paid for some. This is interesting. Paid for high profile people to tweet about the game, which mm -hmm. kind of started off the yeah. started it off, and mm -hmm. that just started rolling like crazy. So mm -hmm. if you can afford that, that's not a bad <laughs> way to do it. Yeah. Um, on other games, we would just pay. You know. Uh, Actual pay per click on Facebook, things like that for some games, but uh, that's got too expensive. Like a buck, a buck a click, which is way too much. Um, so it's uh, Facebook users are traditionally big spenders. Well, if you can get them, that's great. But man, if you if you don't have all your mechanics in place to turn those uh, those clicks into money, uh, you know you're just flushing money down the toilet, mm -hmm. and your users don't spend enough to cover it, and then ah, uh, boo, that's a losing proposition. So it's uh, it's tough. It is tough. Yeah, same thing with like ads, right? A lot of people pay for, for install versus like click. Yeah. yeah. Which is another another interesting market. I've helped enough ad, enough ad people these days. <laughs> Paper install seems so strange because I'm like, if I buy a game and I install it, but then I immediately delete it, they still get the money. Like, is that worth? I mean, I guess that's worth more for them. But <laughs> they just want the they just want you to open up the app and get in there just so they can try to get you hooked. So it's not bad. It's not a bad model, but it's uh, it's tough. You can do it though. Yeah. If you have a good enough game, I think focus on your craft. Make sure your game and your app is the best it can be. And then do your best to figure out the market. If it's good, you know you have some chance of doing well. But if it's not good, well, you're probably well. Then again, what do I know? You hit like the red spike bouncy ball game that like hit the number. I don't know, like just took a template and bam, Bob's your uncle. He's making lots of money. Well, uh, yeah. I don't know. Was there was there some sort of black magic or voodoo? I don't know. I don't know. But it's fantastic. Uh, I, it it blew my mind. We <laughs> brought a bunch of users to push it up to the top of the charts, and other people see it, and they start downloading. They tell their friends or something. That's actually one of the hugest things. Navigating an app store is not fun. So it's is fun. it from the developer side or the music? From, from the user. Just a, oh, yeah, yeah, user is terrible side, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah so, so you just got a bunch of crap that you don't really know whether any of it's good or not. And then, like, even if you do, unless somebody knows your specific app, like, and you're not in the top 100, it's basically in this like weird infinity non-existent zone because they're never going to find it. Ever. Yeah. It's really hard to find. Um, yeah, so maybe for the, our indie game Django, that was neat because we spent Facebook ads, right? So we bought a bunch of people, but we also did free app a day programs. Oh, You've heard of these. Yeah. They're actually really quite effective. I think some of our Intel users have had some of like Amazon's app of the day. Well, they yeah. get that. I mean, there's some paid services where people like <laughs> to install these apps that advertise apps to them and they get a spend normally be a paid app if you get it free for a day. And so that's the bonus for them. And if you can drive a lot of people to use your user app, you spend maybe five thousand bucks depending on your placement and how long it's in there, um, which is kind of pricey, but you'll get up you'll get a tremendous number of downloads in a short period of time. And so you get pushed up high. So we got our game, our word game up to maybe number two in word games on, on the app store, the Apple App Store. Nice. It, but it didn't hold that that momentum. But uh, there it is. Like I say, don't make games for smart people. That's a bad idea. <laughs> and certainly don't make competitive games where not smart people play with smart people because the not smart people look dumb and they go away. It's not good. <laughs> just not good. So, so, so games for smart smart people just have to start with the word Sid Mirror and that's it. You have to take, a take a test to get into the game. It's, it's just bad. <laughs> you know, we, we reacted differently for our last game that we made. We went really dumb. Like we went to your your big cow shooting milk out of your udders, and it's a fun little game, but it's too it's too dumb. So <laughs> we went the other way. It wasn't wasn't a good call either. So there's can, uh, there, can there be a game that's too dumb? I mean, the beginning is the Bart yeah, app. Uh, well, that's just so there's that one where, like, what, the $1,000 game? The $1,000 thing they probably might not be able to. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we can have yeah. a two dumb section for you. A fart app is, uh, I would call it a game. It's a novelty and it's great fun. Unless it's like, like Ocarina, like it's a like musical instrument, like it's like a sound board or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure someone has probably made that. Has probably made some money off that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that was one on the arc one of our arcade, the fart piano. <laughs> there was on the arcade. There's a lot of fascinating <laughs> games on the arcade. Yes. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. And they all run pretty well too. I actually run that. Five inch runs really well. That's the upside. That's the upside. <laughs>
good one. Yeah, well, yeah, there are some really good ones. I saw some really awesome games on that, which you probably see in our feature page if we have a feature game list. I'm sure Dan's on that kind of stuff, though. Yeah. There's some really, really cool things on that. So you want to take some questions? Do you have enough questions, Tan, to take questions yet? Uh, we're actually, the people are asking if we're wrapping up our conversation. <laughs> our doing conversation. I think they want to know more about how to do stuff in GameStop. Sure. Yeah, I think so. I had questions. What questions do you have about GameStop? Plus, you have Steve here, who's CTO, and you can ask him interesting questions that I may have able to answer. Sorry, I didn't think about ads for the uh, how, do you, how does your game make money. So, uh, well, don't answer. You only use that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make money. The last one. All right. 93% answered, so that's what we got. Yeah. Most people want to sell their games, and the, 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 the slightly smarter people want someone to pay them first. Yes. All right. So. Yeah, we got a lot of questions here, Tim. Uh, so you know, most of them are just, like, random stuff. The first actual question was, is, how do you make an actor immune to gravity but still movable? movable? You would put an acceleration opposite of the gravity um, on that actor. Uh, it counteracts the gravity, the acceleration downwards by the, uh, the scene attribute for uh, gravity, whatever it is. Um, and that will mostly take care of it. Uh, uh, it, it, technically, it should take care of it because you have like counteracting forces, uh, and that uh, it sounds right. <laughs> All right, comments, sir. If you're not near the actual phone, like speak towards it. And the only other question was. Uh, Oh, there's, what exactly does the new render system do? That is not a small question. And what is it? Sorry? What exactly does the new render system do? A lot. Look up mega textures in Wikipedia. Well, that's, a big, that's a big answer. So, what we, <laughs> so the problem is with current games around as it is, is that it has, um, you know, we load PNGs, you put your artwork in PNGs or JPEGs, and it kind of just naively draws them. Um, takes them, it puts them on screen, puts them on screen, puts them on screen. You got 10 actors, you got 10 draw calls. You got 50 actors, you got 50 draw calls. The problem with that is it's not very fast when you have more actors on the screen. So you need to do something called batching. You have to take your artwork and batch it. Now the way, what does batching mean? It means you, since when you're drawing in a graphics engine, you're drawing triangles, right? So uh, really for, for a 2D engine like this, they're really, they're, they're quads, they're squares, right? They're rectangles. But that's really two triangles. Anyway, uh, the texture is drawn onto those, uh, those quads, those, those rectangles. And each time you, uh, you can actually draw more than one set of triangles at a time, as you might imagine. You can draw an arbitrary number of triangles, well, a reasonably large number of them. Um, and so if you draw the same image over and over again, well, that's easy enough. You can just say, I want to draw 10 of these images. You put them in a, a triangle list. You put them to the screen, and it's one draw call, and you've got 10 of these things. Well, that only works if you can get your textures managed in such a way, your, your artwork managed in such a way. So this, this concept called a mega texture, and other engines you might hear called a uh, texture atlas, uh, where you take your artwork and it gets put onto uh, a larger image so that you have one PNG with all of your artwork on it, or a lot of your artwork on it. Um, and so the engine can take that and draw it in a smart way uh, so that it can increase how many things it draws at once, which makes your app faster. Now, what's really cool about that is, uh, well, it's faster. The downside is you have to manage the, 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 art, the, the art assets, right? You have to manage these art packs. And so what the new renderer does is we break this stuff up into tiles, uh, so kind of uniform tile pieces. Uh, so we take your large images and we chop it up into smaller pieces. And we just kind of load those in on demand and fill up a very large texture uh, to take that headache away from you of having to manage how much can fit onto a sprite sheet at a time. That actually can be a pain in your, in your butt when you're dealing with various kinds of platforms and how much artwork can I fit, what resolutions am I dealing with, stuff just doesn't fit. And so the, mm -hmm. the, the tile-based system we're using kind of makes that problem go away for you um, uh, when it works. Uh, we're still working through some bugs, but it's, it's pretty cool in my opinion. I'm, I'm guessing also one of the questions will come up in terms of the new engine is why the current, why the current engine has um, such generate such large apps, or the current, uh, the current nightly generates such large apps. So oh, with the, talk about that. Oh, with the main on yeah. this? Yeah. 
Yeah, right now, so right now we, uh, so PNG uses uh, zip compression, so your PNG on disk is not going to be the same size as what's actually in memory. So if you want to know how much is going to be in memory, take the pixels times the pixels times uh, 32 bits, and that's how many bits you're going to have, divided by 8 bytes, and you do the math from there. So the general idea is we don't compress our tiles. Oh, yeah. So basically what gets back to it is, is that we're storing that uncompressed on disk, and they are compressed. So yeah, you'll get the full uncompressed size, which we are going to put in compression. We've got that figured out, um, so they will go down quite dramatically. Uh, but yes, in the current time scan, they're not compressed. So you're, and if you have multiple resolutions using that 3x, that 2x, you get multiple mega textures on disk. So you'll have three, up to three times the art assets. The other thing <coughs> uh, were, oh, and one of the other advantages of uh, doing those tiles was apparently it's like a kind of poor man's compression in that if the tiles find a repeat, it won't yeah. store them more than once. So yeah, per, per actor. Yeah, per actor. Okay. Although that should be uh, addressed uh, in the future so that it's database-wide. Yeah. So if you have the same kind of images reused, it'll, it'll condense to the bare minimum set of artwork you need to. Yeah. So for example, we had animation where only the top half maybe didn't change and the bottom half didn't change. We could, we could definitely uh, reuse that. Um, so yeah, the tile database helps there. We're adding compression because, well, we should have already, and it's coming, so that's good. Um, that, that'll help with the, the, the image bloat that you see. Yeah. Um, but the downside is also we don't really support JPEGs under this format. So if you have some realistic looking images and you want to use that lossy compression of JPEG, you can't really use it in the system. Because you know, so we don't have JPEG tiles, although I guess we could add them. Um, so I think what we were doing with JPEGs is we were going to leave those alone and those were for people who really, really needed to optimize for disk space and didn't mind lower load time. Yes. But, yeah, so you don't get to take advantage of this. And I think one of the other things that was interesting about this new system is that it does, to a certain extent, prevent people from stealing your artwork. So it, like, yeah. like until people reverse engineer our format, it actually is really good for helping with that, too. I think if you reverse engineer that would be a pain in the butt for a lot of the tiles. <laughs> that would be nightmarish. Yeah. That would be totally nightmarish. Did you see Bill Brown's question? Uh, well, I'm going down the question. So oh, okay. That was, that was what exactly does the render system do? Okay, keep going down. Uh, let's see here. Someone posted that the formula, R. Thurman posted the formulas for con combating gravity on the, already on the forums. Uh, any connection on the question of mega textures, any connection to the mega detectors in reach? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. I don't either. The first time mega textures got really used as a key term was because, um, God, what's the guy who did Carmack uh -huh. um, implemented the technology in, in, in their engine? I think it was five at that point for that game. Oh, we took five. Okay. Why the association name? Ah, okay. Nope. Thank you for. We uh, just call it mega because it's really, really big. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Let's see. So, but we don't have sprite sheets. How do the new render system deals with my? 1,600 single images. They become something, what is it, 64 by 64 all size tiles? All your images get chopped up into yeah. smaller bits, so they're still referenced like images as far as you know, but under the covers, uh, we break your large, you know, your large image up into smaller ones, and then we stitch those smaller ones together at runtime uh, to, to handle all those images. So you've got 1,000 images, you've got 10,000 images in there, and it will load just what's needed. And what's really cool about this is as you kind of you know, say a large scrolling game, lots of artwork, as you're loading stuff in and old stuff's kind of evicted, you know, becomes stale because it's not needed anymore, we can start unloading things. You, know, you just don't have to worry about making the optimal right sheet. So it'll handle your 1,600 images, God help you. Uh, it will handle that just fine, um, assuming you don't want to, you know, have, where, where things break down is when you have more images you want to draw on the screen at one time than can fit in the mega texture then you're going to have what's known as thrashing. It's going to constantly load textures and unload them and load them and unload them, and then uh, your frame rate's going to go to crap. Uh, but we also support the concept of up to four of these massive textures, um, or however many your hardware can support, generally four. So we can, we can fit all the artwork for a reasonably fantastically large game uh, with no problems. Uh, so I, I don't expect that'll be an issue once we get past some of the code, some of the image bloat uh, and get it into the out of nightly, it'll be, it'll be good yeah. stuff. For example, though, for example, if you had like a giant big blue background for your sky, right, we could throw away almost 90% of that image and tile it with that one small chunk of the light. Yeah. I, think they're, I, think. I think they're asking about the flip of that, like lots of small images, and I think the, the answer there is we're kind of giving you the advantage of sprite sheets without 
having you build the spreadsheet. Yeah. Well, there is kind of a downside of this system too, and it's uh, what's called in programming terms fragmentation, right? So if you have lots of tiny images, and we have this problem with fonts too, right? You have little letters and things you want to fit, really tiny particle pieces. Uh, we actually subdivide further some of those tiles and do some extra special packing for that. Uh, but if your images, if all your images, say you had 1,600, God help you again, 1,600 eight by eight images, that would be really bad if we didn't have some sub sub uh, some sub packing take place because you basically have your eight by eight image inside of a 64 tile and you have a tremendous amount of waste. Uh, and so we handle that as well by packing in in certain uh, those tiles smaller images so that they fit well uh, without the general. One of the big problems with sprite sheet packing, if you ever built one yourself or dealt with them, you ha hand a sprite sheet packer a bunch of images and say, pack this up. It might take it 15 seconds. You can't be doing that at runtime in a game uh, because the amount of work the thing has to do to say, where can this fit? And it's moving it over here. And it's like, wait, what's happening here? Wait, may I move it over here? That, that's actually a hard, that's a hard problem to solve in an efficient way. And so you can have fast packers that have a lot of waste, or you can have really tight packers that take a long time. Um, and so it's kind of a, a trade-off that I think we've solved pretty well for most images, uh, but there'll still be some fragmentation in some ways. It won't be as tightly packed as if you did it, you know, uh, from scratch, you know, say with the best possible algorithm. But that's the trade-off. You don't have to worry about it, and it, you probably won't notice the waste for most of the games uh, of reasonable scope. Uh, and we handle those smaller cases pretty well too. Plus, you should gain some load time speed as well because we're not decompressing PNGs. And ideally, the, the compression algorithm we're going to pick is faster than PNG. Okay. So it, the load time should be good. Um, yeah, uh, all that. I think there's other issues in, in current game style too, which have caused uh, caused some consternation, like unloading existing images is not easily controlled, so you end up with memory bloat if you, uh, if you change images a lot. Um, so a lot of that's just resolved by the system as well. So in general, it should be faster. Render side, load times, and, and general memory footprint too. So you just won't end up loading and loading and loading and loading images. It will hit a limit and start unloading stuff. Great. Yeah. And the resolution and independent stuff will just make you get a different mega texture for yeah. For these different Apple three X, so we'll have a specific mega texture for the iPhone six, which is that three X, and you know the ret Retina ones. And down the road, we'll probably get something where we actually have more called out resolution than just generic mm -hmm. Apple resolutions. All right. Next question. Hey Jan. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey Jan. May I ask a question? Yeah. Go. Um, so I have a question on behalf of the users. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit of horse. I've been kind of sick. Um, I have a question that I think uh, users w would want to know. With the new rendering system, how does um, the, the the new rendering uh, how does that work with um, a resolution independence? Um, how are they to um, format their images going forward to make it make sure that it's um, uh, appropriate for their game? How what does it look like? So from what I understand, I, so you're going to need to correct me on this one, but I think what you're doing. You pretty much do what you do now. What we actually end up doing is when we rip the images apart, we're keeping three different databases. So when we detect which um, resolution independence level you're using, we'll draw the images from that. So it effectively works like it does now, but instead of storing individual images, we're just going to be storing them in this image database that we have that's packed a bunch of packed, broken up textures. That's right. Yeah, I think you got so, what right. so what you're so what you're saying is that from a user perspective, they're not going to see any difference. It's just going to be it's just going to be just kind of awesome sauce. It just, it just works. It should just work, yeah. That's the hope, yes. And it's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. No problem. The next question was where to get a where to get a game salad mug. I put a link to our Cafe Press site. We don't actually make any money off it because we have a Cafe Press site. Yeah, if we try to <laughs> if we try to make money off the Cafe <laughs> Press site, then everything gets way too expensive. <laughs> so I think everything is practically a cost on that site. Look, product placement. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the Cafe Press mug is not as cool because it doesn't have <coughs> solid text on the other side. <laughs> yeah, these are limited edition mugs. I guess. This is the one I got from Christmas a long time ago, and there's like new mugs that came in since then. So, so the next question is the usual question, I guess. So when you when do you realistically expect to have the new rendering system fully working with texture compression? Realistically, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I this. I wasn't going to lie to you. Um, these things, uh, it's hard for me to predict when it'll be done because of a lot of competing priorities. However, the guy who's working on it, that he's been solving this problem. We just picked literally 
on Monday what the texture compression we're going to use is. Um, and he's been busy fixing issues on the publishing side with, or, you know, working with Tan to fix issues of the texture system not working at all because it's on published apps, because things are all white and the database isn't right. So that's getting worked through. When's it going to be done? I won't promise you a date. Uh, we're working on it and it's going as fast as we can. Derp and derp. And, and knowing this, this is such a big change, we'll probably go through a lot of RCs on this as people yeah. probably open the yeah. wider to people. Yeah, the, so I would say get the nightlies and see how it works with your apps and report any issues and we'll fix them as we can yep. as fast as possible. Yep. And uh, that's the best we can do. I can't, I can't predict beyond that. We don't have like a stable of every known game. Well, actually, we could probably do that, but we don't have the manpower to load every game known to man uh, and run them through exhaustive tests. So we're relying on you guys to help. That's why we have the nightlies. So help us out with that, and it'll help it help us go faster. And, and if you're not pro, go ahead and upgrade to pro so you can see the nightlies. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the perks of being pro. That's true. That is your. So that's the honest answer. The not honest answer is uh, two weeks. <laughs> it's always two weeks away. <laughs> yeah, two weeks. Two weeks tops. So what would the infinity symbol? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna put the official answer is two weeks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote us on that. Uh, all right, let's see here. Which one? I'm not sure how to answer. The next one is, how can you drink Dr. Pepper and not die in the process? From Jonathan Hera. <laughs> Who's drinking well, no. Dr. Pepper here? Easily. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, I, I drink plenty of that stuff, and I don't die, as far as I know. So. Yeah, we're still here. Same. I have a frozen, icy version of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, those are good. Did you find the frozen one? Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the frozen oh, frozen oh. Frozen, yeah. Wait, Slurpee Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Well, 7-Eleven had that for a while, too. Yeah, go to 7-Eleven, they'll have Slurpee versions, or if you go to the alternative, Slurpee icy. Version. Yeah, Slurpee version, yeah, someone's oh, yeah. version. Yeah, okay, version, yeah. version. Yeah, it's not, not Slurpee versions. <laughs> not like Slurpee versions. That's what I heard. Let's see. So next question. I've noticed when testing games using Apple tools that frame rate will drop on scenes using Interpolate, so I never use it on game playing scenes. Why might that happen? Uh, many reasons. Uh, probably so, a bug. File a bug so, in the bug database, so we'll get to it. So Bill, when you go back, uh, I would ask another. I would ask you a question to answer this one: Is what are you interpolating? Because that really that kind of really depends on that, I think. All right. Next question. Uh, Mick, Mick uh, has noted that it has been in works for almost a year. Yes. There's been several revisions throughout the year. Yes. Yeah, we, we've actually changed a lot of it as we've gone along. Um, like the current version is actually already partially a partially updated pipeline from our original one, if I remember right, because we used GS Image and there were a few other things, other yep. things we've done. Yep. Yeah, if it was all we were working on, that'd be easy enough, but there's a lot more going into things that uh, we're not really talking about, but there's stuff happening. And so it's kind of a slow go on some of these things. See, how does interpolate work within the game? So, like, how does the behavior work, or is that so. was the actual? Jonathan will answer that better than I could. I don't remember which behavior is which. Well, I'm thinking more. I'm guessing more from an engine perspective. Like, how often do we calculate the interpolation? I wasn't probably assume every frame. So we just do it every frame, and That's it's probably just, why it's slow. It, it, yeah, okay. That's probably why it's slow. On like how you do it, you have like a gradual like. Test the beginning, slow at the end, or slow the beginning, test at the end, or just straight interpolation. So you have like a, a wave that. So does the e so we have interpolation <laughs> easing and the, the, yeah, the ease easing in, ease out, or ease in, or ease out, uh, or just. Can we pull it up here on the screen? I can pull game solid up if you want. Let's see here. I hope that answers your question. Hey, Jonathan, do you have a um, do you have a template that you would recommend to um, assist users with interpolation as far as a good example of what that should look like? Or, um, yeah. Uh, I don't think I have any interpolates in any of the uh, templates. Um, I'll show you a screen in a second here. Mm, I don't think so. Kind of cool. think, it definitely goes every frame. That's not good. I'm pretty, yeah, probably, this is probably why it's slow. So slow. I think we should put one together. Maybe like to spend a, a half an hour and put one the, a, an ideal kind of interpolation to give an, a user's example. Yeah, Interpolation's been a, a long term um, uh, question mark. Yeah. I think a lot of people know how to use it. It's just that we need a lot of examples on using it in different ways to show like the performance benefits and the trade-offs of how you, when, when you use it in a certain way. Like, 
I remember for a while interpolating colors was a really bad idea. Agree. Yeah. Turn, Agree. Off, turn off the ability to change RGB on the fly. Oh, so we that, that no longer works. Okay, well that that was such a bad idea. We took it away from people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I we keep every time we do some graphic stuff, things kind of get. It sounds like it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have a um, an example, a game project of uh, just interpolation to um, well, well, for that reason. Yeah. 